Hello everyone and welcome to Counselor Feature Friday. I'm your host, Brian Urban. In these features, we hope to give you some simple tips, tidbits, and tricks to make your days easier and your patients happier. In this feature, we're going to talk about document storage folder setup. This is actually part one of a two-part series. In part one, we're going to talk about directly setting up your preferred folders and subfolders for both patient documents and clinic documents. In part two, we're going to talk about how folders and subfolders can be created while generating form documents and repair forms. So buckle up. Today we're talking about something that will help keep your clinic organized, nice and neat, and everyone on the same page. So we're going to start here by clicking on administration in the top menu bar, and then we will select documents under patient setup. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to mention this is an area you want to treat with pretty significant caution. The reason why is that changes you make here will affect all of the patients in your database, or more specifically affect all the document storage uh, area within each patient or database. Uh, so if you uh, plan to make changes here, you do want to think this through as far as what folders you need, what subfolders you need. Uh, this may be an instance where you are looking to you know, scan all of your charts, right? You're going to take on the big project. Or maybe you've already done that and you have uh, some additional you know, ways that you want to kind of uh, delineate the different folders and subfolders. Point being, you want to give us some consideration uh, before you do it. However, once you decide what you want to do, it's very straightforward to get this in place. Uh, here we already have, in this example, a test account here, we already have some folders are in place. Okay, so you can create those anytime just by clicking on new folder. Uh, it'll ask you to type in the name and it'll add the folder. Okay, uh, once you have your kind of top level folders in place, and this is, you know, we're focusing here under the documents um, um, master folder here. Now, within like medical waiver, for example, you can see a little arrow next to it that tells us that there is, you know, at least one subfolder. When I open that up, I can see there's a subfolder for 2019. Now, of course, we can look in there um, and we could have a subfolder 2019. So we can create subfolders for every month of the year, for example, if you want to get to that level. Or if I wanted to stay at the medical waiver level, I could say, let's add a new folder for 2020. Okay, now maybe I put that in the wrong place. You could drag and drop that folder someplace else, right? So you do have the ability to shift these around um, once you have them in place. Now you can also store a document in this area. If there's a document that you want to appear in every patient's document storage area, right? That documents tab within the patient profile, you could store that document here, right? You create a folder or subfolders, uh, and then when as needed, you can go into the patient profile and you will see that folder, uh, that, that, that file, a document, whatever the case may be. Now it's important to note that that document will not be auto filled. It's going to be just a, a static kind of standard PDF, for example, or a Word document or an image or something, whatever you stored in there. So uh, if you want it to auto populate, of course, then you can work with counselor, our support team, and we can help you build your form documents. Um, and that's typically how it's handled, but there are some instances where uh, you may want to have a standardized document that is available readily for each patient. Okay, um, so point being though is you can store, you can, I'm sorry, create as many folders, subfolders, and you can go further, right? You can create a subfolder, you know, beyond 2020 in the month, so you can get down even further if you wanted to, okay? Uh, once again though, this folder structure will affect every patient uh, going forward, um, new and existing. Okay, so uh, here is also the patient portal area. Um, this is if you want to have documents that are visual, visible to patients in the patient portal. You can, of course, add documents to a specific patient's patient portal uh, through their profile. You can go in and add a document for them. So if there's just one you, you want, you know, John Smith to see, you could load a document to John Smith's portal. Right. These would be documents that would be universal. So any patient that opened their portal would see these documents. Okay. Um, some people have used those for, say, like uh, VNG instructions um, or maybe counseling tips or things like that. And there may be different ways to achieve that, but that can be uh, one method of doing so. Okay. Uh, so point being, uh, you set this up with caution, uh, but there's a great deal of flexibility in the setup process. Uh, and we are happy to assist um, with any questions you have in this area. 
Now, when we get back up to administration here and we look over at the clinic documents area, it's really the same idea. Now, the difference, of course, here is the clinic documents are documents and folders and subfolders that only live in this area. These are, and this is intended to be an area for your clinic document storage. This, you know, invoices you receive that may have 10 patient names on them. Obviously, you don't want to store that within a patient profile. So this gives you an opportunity, for example, to set up folders for different hearing instrument companies, near mold manufacturers, and insurance companies, and then have subfolders within them. So you could have, of course, a high-level uh, folder for a specific manufacturer, and then uh, drill down from there, right? 2020, 2019, 2018, and then subfolders from there for each month of the year. So if someone ever says, hey, can I see the um, invoices for a specific manufacturer for March of 2019, you have one place to go and you find that. You're not using the, the large you know, file uh, cabinet uh, storage system uh, to manage that. And once again, you can set your folder structure up however you wish. Now there's more flexibility with this one in that because it doesn't directly affect patients, uh, you could change this more readily and not really have any significant consequences, right? So you could shift these around, you could have a new folder and realize, uh, I don't really need that one and delete it. Uh, there wouldn't be any significant consequences like potentially there could be with the patient document storage. Okay, so that covers the, uh, the folder setup for both the patient documents uh, storage as well as the clinic document storage. As I mentioned in part two of this, we're gonna look at how folders and subfolders can be automatically created as part of the form document creation and repair form uh, creation. So I look forward to seeing you for part two. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for Counselor Feature Friday. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.